In this segment, you will see the steps necessary to assemble an exchanger. The task of assembling an exchanger is usually started immediately following the dismantling, repair, or cleaning, unless the unit is not operating. If the assembling task is a continuation of the dismantling, and it is the same work shift, your job permit should be okay to continue. But if there is any question, discuss the permit with an authorized person. Begin by cleaning as necessary and inspecting all the parts to be reassembled. Give special attention to properly cleaning the gasket surfaces. Obtain a new set of gaskets. Use the exchanger and bundle identification numbers to select the proper gaskets. The same type lifting and pulling equipment can be used for assembling an exchanger as was used in dismantling it. One tube sheet on the bundle is larger than the other. The larger tube sheet is called the stationary sheet, and it will not slide into the shell. The smaller tube sheet is called the floating tube sheet. This is the end of the bundle to be inserted into the shell. Before lifting the bundle, check the large tube sheet for stenciling or match marks to locate the top of the bundle. Rotate the bundle to align correctly before lifting it for assembly. If a bundle is inserted with incorrect orientation, its efficiency will be reduced and the channel head gasket surfaces may not match. Assembling an exchanger requires lifting and moving heavy pieces. Talk about safety precautions. Make plans to stay clear of suspended loads and taut cables. Give special thought and attention to keeping your hands and feet clear of pinch points. Begin the assembly of an exchanger by placing a wide band sling under the middle of the tube bundle and move it to the exchanger shell with the small tube sheet towards the shell and the top of the bundle correctly oriented. And before you start the tube sheet into the shell, place a gasket over the floating head end and position it near the sling. This is the stationary tube sheet to shell gasket. It must be put on before inserting the bundle in the shell because the gasket will not slip over the stationary tube sheet. In some cases, the gasket may be put on before the bundle is moved into position for inserting. The thing to remember is that this gasket must be put on the bundle after it is lifted and before it is inserted in the shell. Inserting the tube bundle into the shell can be a difficult task since most bundles are constructed for a tight fit. Usually, you will need some device other than pushing by hand to get the bundle into the shell. One way to force a bundle into the shell is to push it into place with a piece of equipment where there is room to maneuver the equipment. In hard to get to places, Snatch blocks and shackles must be used along with the cable from an air tugger or crane winch to pull the bundle in. As the bundle is pushed into the shell and the gasket and sling get close to the shell, it will be necessary to stop and reposition the sling and gasket. Watch the gasket as the bundle moves and do not let it get damaged. Continue inserting the bundle until all but about two feet is inserted. Then remove the sling and stick the gasket in place on the shell flange by using a grease stick. Check your bundle and shell flange for match marks or other identification for bundle position. Make any position corrections needed and complete inserting the bundle until the tube sheet seats against the shell flange gasket. The tube sheet must be evenly seated to the shell flange. It may be necessary to lift the tube sheet by a jack underneath or using the hoisting cable on an eye bolt while you make the final pull on the bundle to complete inserting it. The next step is to install the channel head. Begin by placing the gasket on the tube sheet. Then lift the channel head and place it so the partitions in the channel head are aligned with the grooves and gasket surfaces of the tube sheet. Move the channel head into place 
and secure it with four bolts equally spaced in the bolt circle. Keep an eye on the gasket to see that it stays in place as the four bolts are tightened. Then insert the remainder of the bolts and tighten them using the crossover pattern of tightening. The final step on the channel head end of the exchanger is to install the channel head cover. Make certain the grooves and gasket are aligned properly with the channel head partitions. After the channel head gasket has been placed, move the cover in position and install and tighten four bolts around the flange. Then complete installing and tightening the remainder of the bolts. Again, use a crossover pattern for tightening the bolts. The inlet and outlet piping can now be reconnected. You will now move to the other end of the exchanger to install the floating head. If our exchanger were a pull-through type, the floating head would be installed before the bundle is inserted and the shell cover would already be in place. But our exchanger is the type with a split backing device to hold the floating head cover. Begin assembling by placing the upper half of the split backing device over the tube bundle and next to the tube sheet. If a spacer ring is used, it should be placed over the tube sheet at this time. Then place the gasket on the tube sheet. Raise the floating head cover, and if there are partitions, align them with the gasket surfaces. Bolt the cover to the upper half of the split ring. Do not tighten the bolts. Now you can place the lower half of the split ring in place and insert the bolts. Tighten the bolts on the floating head. Again, be sure the gasket stays in place and use the crossover method of tightening. Leave the shell cover off until after the tube bundle has been tested. Before we consider pressure testing procedures, open your workbooks to exercise three and answer the questions. The final segment of this module is devoted to pressure testing and returning an exchanger to service. There are two separate flow circuits through an exchanger. One medium flows through tubes and is often called the tube side flow. The other medium flows in the shell and around the tubes. It is called the shell side flow. The tube side flow enters the channel head and is directed through certain tubes by the channel head partitions. The flow goes from the tubes into the floating head cover where it is redirected into another group of tubes and flows back to the channel head. The shell side flow enters the shell and flows through the shell around the outside of the tubes as directed by the tube bundle baffles. Two pressure tests will be required to completely pressure test an exchanger. A tube side test will test the tube bundle and a shell test will test the shell. The tube bundle will be tested first. It will be checked with a hydrostatic test. First, make sure the nozzle valves are closed on the channel head. Then connect a water hose to the bleeder valve on the bottom nozzle of the channel head. Open the top nozzle bleeder valve and fill the two bundle and heads with water. Make sure all air is displaced with water. After the tube bundle is filled, close the top bleeder valve and connect a pressure test pump to the bottom bleeder valve and build pressure to the desired level for testing. When the desired pressure is reached, close the bottom bleeder valve and look for leaks around all the gasket surfaces. Give special attention to the floating head surfaces. The tube sheet floating head gasket is a vulnerable place for leaks. Watch for water leakage from the shell open end or bottom nozzle. If the stationary head tube sheet or tubes leak, you should find water in the shell. After any leaks are repaired and the tube bundle is holding pressure, contact an authorized person to inspect and approve the test. 
Once approval of the test is received, disconnect the pump and drain the water from the tube bundle. The tube bundle pressure test is now complete. The next phase of testing will be the shell test. However, the shell cover must first be installed. That is the next step. Make certain the shell cover gasket is in place and the shell cover fits evenly. Then install bolts and tighten using the crossover method. Fill the shell with water through the bottom shell nozzle bleeder valve and vent it from the top nozzle bleeder valve. Again, remember, it is very important to displace all air with water. Once the shell is completely filled with water, close the top bleeder valve and build pressure in the shell up to the test pressure. Inspect the shell for leaks. This will include the shell cover flange and the flanges that join the shell and channel head. After all leaks are repaired and the pressure is holding, contact the person authorized to inspect the test. After the test has been approved, remove the test equipment and drain the water from the shell. To return the exchanger to service, remove the blinds or blanks and bolt the flanges together with new gaskets. The job is not complete until all tools and excess materials are removed. Leave the job site clean. The final step in completing your job is to return your work permit properly filled out to indicate the job is complete. Now open your workbooks to exercise four and complete the questions there.